my name is Timira Edikani, and I'm here to talk to you about my senior design project. It's um, an analysis of uh, overhead and underground transmission lines. Use that one and see if it works. This is just a this is just a visual depiction of what I've been doing. Uh, on the left, you have the overhead uh, power lines, and so we're trying to see if it's cost efficient to bury them. Just a definition of this. Uh, overhead is a structure used in electrical power distribution and to transmit electrical engineer, um, energy along long distances. It consists of one or more conductors suspended by towers or poles. And since most of the insulation is provided by air, uh, the overhead power lines are generated with cheaper uh, means of uh, electrical energy. On the ground, however, it's just burying the overhead cables. And the questions that came into mind while I was doing this analysis uh, are why uh, should this overhead power lines be buried on the ground? Uh, what are the possible implications of this? Uh, what is the impact on the cost? Is it less or more expensive in the long run? And what is the solution? My client uh, is Dr. Nan, and they, uh, when I met with him at first, I asked, you know, I asked what are the expectations expectations you have of me from this project. And basically I was to do a lot of research <coughs> and information gardening, I do a lot of comparison, uh, meet with the garden utilities company and do a lot of premise work. And so I started out by breaking up my uh, project into uh, one of my responsibilities where which included the project assignment, um, my research and analysis, report, presentation, meeting and then the final presentation. So the first thing I had to do was uh, start with a non-disclosure agreement because I was given a template by a company who did uh, extensive uh, research on underground work in about 1998. And um, the attorney is just a, a random name. But um, <laughs> yeah, so it's a lot of confidential information and this was how, this was the beginning of the whole premise process. And then um, the second thing I had to look into was a statement of services and what assumptions uh, I had to make and what limitations, how limited I was by this project. And uh, the obvious assumptions were uh, that I would find sufficient information and all because this whole thing is centered around the amount of data I could uh, generate. And secondly, that the template that was provided um, would be validated by the garden utility company. So I was limited, highly limited, by uh, the amount of data I got online. I could hardly get any proper cost breakdown. It was just general comparison. It was so difficult. And uh, Garland Utility Company, they weren't uh, very uh, friendly when it came to releasing their information. They were like, oh, well, you can ask us what you want to ask us, but we're not going to hand you any template or anything of that sort. And so uh, this is just uh, the deliverables I was supposed to provide throughout the semester. And uh, this is just an example of uh, the mom. Uh, this was the meeting we had with the Garland Utilities Company on April the 15th. And uh, it took place at 9 a.m. in Garland. Um, and yeah, it was about an hour and 30 minutes of Q&A. Like I said earlier, on the limitations of quantitative analysis I faced were uh, on information on the availability. Uh, the template couldn't be verified. Uh, the, the Garland Utilities highly withheld information. And the data found online, if you Google anything about overhead on the ground poles, it's just a comparison of quantitative things. They don't go into quantitative analysis in depth in any way. And then the cost breakdown is unavailable or outdated. So the problem analysis and findings I could come up with were that typically it's three to five times 
it's more expensive to ferry uh, transmission lines uh, than to have them assembled. And the reason is because of the first uh, initial cost, which is uh, cost of installation, and also the long run due to reliability and maintenance if there's any sort of fault. Because it's very, you have to, you know, excavate the whole thing again and test and all that. It's so much more expensive. And second of all, it's really expensive because of testing. A lot of testing is done uh, when it comes to undergrounding, and this results in higher cost. Um, another thing is cost varies based on the land structure and the rock present where this um, undergrounding takes place. And one of the biggest obstacles of undergrounding is the amount of space available where you're doing this. And um, so from all of this, concluded that overhead is still the best solution. It has its obvious problems by being exposed. Um, it's easily exposed to weather hazards, weather damage, and if there's a tornado or hurricane, it's easily affected. But it's still cheaper and it still makes more sense to have that uh, underground. And um, some of the reasons it's also cheaper is because uh, timber is used it's cheaper to um, use. And also, uh, equipment costs for overhead poles are about twice as expensive as its labor costs, and when compared, still nothing near underground. And overall, overhead uh, is largely preferable by all companies, the only disadvantage being its uh, exposure. Questions? So, do you have uh, any of the data that? Uh to share with the class that we got from, yes. I have it, but I didn't include it because I didn't see what I was going to use it to compare it with. Okay. Yes. Who, who would pay, who, who pays the cost of putting the lines underground? Is it the utility, or is it the city, or can, can individual neighbor, neighborhoods? It, it, it's, the, it? it's the utility. This is. Uh, the premise that I have here is that uh, I'm actually questioning utilities is that it is not as expensive as they would like us to believe burning wires underground than overhead. But uh, utilities using the, the rates scale PUC is saying that you ask us to do that and the rates will go up. The new technologies have come out where they have horizontal boring that you can literally, and you may have seen the fiber cables being being buried without even digging a trench. There's no open trenching. You just barrel through, drill through, and you can go past uh, three or four manholes. It cuts down on the number of manholes. Each manhole in a city like Dallas would cost anywhere from uh, Twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. So if you can avoid one manhole, if you go past three, you're saving that money. Utilities would not like to share that with the public and uh, with the PUC. Uh, City of Frisco last month came out and said that uh, there'll be no overhead distribution in the developing city of Frisco. And uh, we went to Garland Power Life when they started open up the data and she has the information they did agree that uh, in some cases it is not as expensive as you'd like to believe but they somehow they are hesitant to share the data because municipalities and cities would come down very hard on them saying that them but the whole thing and, uh, so we'll continue with this thing here because uh, there is data available we just have to Try them out of the utilities. And, uh, if going to Garland was the first step, when we started asking the right questions, they started coming out, and, and they did agree that, yeah, it's not ten times as expensive as people would like to believe. It is somewhere between two to three times spring. But what is also is, of course, outside the aesthetics and. Uh, all the other things we're talking about, 
Look at Manhattan, look at uh, San Francisco, look at LA. Real estate can't be any more expensive than those places. If they can do it, why can't uh, uh, suburban cities or more uh, mid-sized cities like uh, Fort Worth, Dallas, uh, places like that? So the research will continue. Uh, I had asked Amy to gather the information. Obviously, she concluded that there's not much public data available. Usually, people are not going to publish the data. But uh, with the advent of uh, fiber optics being buried, there is a good bit of data available. If they can drill through. And now the technology has come out where you can have conduit, which can house fiber optics, telephone lines, as well as the electrical lines, and keep them insulated, and keep them operating properly. So uh, we'll continue. Hopefully, uh, we'll pick it up. Yeah. Yeah, I also think they, they could save a lot. When, you know, when there's storms here, uh, that you know, it knocks out power to old neighborhoods, and, you know, because yes, of the high winds. And, 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 and absolutely, and absolutely. Your, Europe, uh, European countries have adopted it. When they, they talk about when there's storm, at least we know where the where the out is it. But you also have the technology where you can do that. You have the traces, you put it in the pickup truck and you drive by the conduit and it will tell you. It will beep as to where the disconnect is. So those those technologies are there. It is being used. It's just that uh, Utilities here in America, they just don't want to do it. <laughs> it costs us basically a lot of money. So, any any other questions on this one? Sure. Um, where's the rest of your team? She is a soloist. Okay. Yes. So we, from the from the very beginning. From the very beginning, yes. We okay. we had uh, 16 students and we were three, 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 and so we had to. I thought we could have paired her with a, a, with a team of four. Right. But we thought that this was it. Okay. Um, when you found that you weren't going to receive the data, and it, it does appear that you weren't able to get very much data from uh, the city, at what point did that happen during the semester? When did it become obvious that you weren't going to have the data? I'm sorry? Okay. But in the middle of April. Right. Well, um, I have to commend you on just the, uh, you know, the bravery of going up there and presenting the project when you didn't really have very much data. You, you had no control over whether or not you're, you were able to get the data. Um, the city clammed up for whatever reason. And so uh, that's a setback, and setbacks happen. And it's uh, not every project goes as planned. And, um, you know, so I commend you on getting up and going through with the presentation. So if you, if you see her book, uh, there is uh, there are a couple of uh, templates that we have authentic templates uh, which uh, show what is the cost of putting a, a mile of underground cable versus overhead. What we wanted was to validate those, those are 90s numbers, validate those for here in Texas. Those are California numbers from the 90s. And, uh, and suddenly they got very alerted and uh, they didn't want to disclose because of the PUC and some uh, legal liabilities and some other things. So uh, yeah, it, it was kind of the same Yeah. No, I too have to commend you. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult task, but it's, it's real life. This is what happens in, in, in projects. And just the fact that you're able to stand there and come up with some recommendations based on data that you couldn't find. It was a good effort.
Good. Thank you.